Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. In this episode I want to begin with actually upgrading mission control. I think we should probably be able to get more than two active contracts at a time and 32,000 is not too bad. We'll have to get the tracking station upgrade for flight planning but uh, yeah I think that's worthwhile and so instead of just having science data from space around Kerbin and this sounding rocket record. Let's pick up some more of these contracts. Uh, let's see now about the atmospheric pressure readings. Okay, well let's go, f we have a thermometer, so let's go with the temperature scan. Oh, on the surface. On the surface would be interesting. Uh, measure the temperature in flight is a little bit easier than on the surface. That's not too much of a budget to do all this with. Uh, where, where are these places? Hold on a sec. Uh, well, let's pick a few more. We're, we're obviously going to have to uh, have Kerbal Space Flight. And we're eventually going to have to explore the moon. But let's not go too far. Let me take a look at where the, the these temperature scans have to be done. I don't know, but I think they're all clustered right around here. I think this is one of the ones. It's tough to see, though. I can't zoom in any more than this. I think I'm going to hold off on the temperature scan stuff for now. What I want to do first in this episode is aim for the moon. Uh, and so we're going to take out the, the sounding rocket record uh, mark here. And that will probably be the last sounding rocket record mark that we're going to do unless they have stuff that is even beyond the moon. Um, and because we are going to try and uh, send a probe around the moon. We're not going to be able to achieve orbit around the moon I don't think. But I at least want to send a probe over there. And so here is the rocket. And if you said I was going to add more boosters, you would be correct. But two of these boosters are not like the other two. So these are not four of the same boosters. Uh, you can see from the nozzles here. Uh, this is an experimental idea. Uh, two of these, All of these boosters light on launch. However, two of these boosters have doubled the burn time as the other boosters. Let's make sure that's... Well, anyway, uh, it showed 1 minute and 40 seconds here, but this showed an extra second. Anyway, uh, the idea is that uh, we are going to have uh, these two boosters drop off first. They only burn for a minute and 40 seconds, but these other two boosters uh, last for double that length. And so you see the thrust to weight ratio here, uh, not going below 1.18. Uh, through the entire first stage, which is uh, quite long. So, and then the uh, second stage is still a little bit lightweight, but uh, hopefully it will be going much faster by that point. And so that I'll make up for that. So that's my temperature solution. I thought about adding little boosters to the second stage just to give it a little bit more oomph, but in retrospect, that wasn't a particularly clever idea, so I let that go. Uh, otherwise, a uh, very similar rocket to the Chandra 1. And so, yeah, I'm just thinking about what else I might need to do to make this actually work. I suppose it's worth mentioning that at this stage in our tech tree, uh, the Sun rocket boosters compare very favorably in ISP to the actual engines. The Vanguard is uh, currently the best engine we've got unlocked. Uh, and it's got uh, 248 at sea level, 270 in vacuum. The boosters right now at their best tech level get uh, 230 at sea level, 250 in vacuum. So, yeah, not too bad. All right, let's try and launch this. It's uh, 4,276, uh, most expensive rocket we've tried so far. But uh, we are going to be trying to go to the moon. Hmm... Hold on a sec, I'm getting a lot of weird... weird graphical issues here. So let me restart the program. Let me see what I can do about this. Alright, so I dumped OpenGL, I went to Active Texture Management Aggressive, and I have also dumped Bobcat Soviet engines because they don't fit in with the tech tree right now. So uh, once they are in with the tech tree, I'll add them back in. But for now, I'll save RAM space. And we're running at 2.6 gigabytes of RAM. So just as a reference. But uh, yeah, 
uh, active texture management aggressive I've been using it in other contexts and other installs and it seems to work fine so I think uh, we'll go with that as opposed to OpenGL I was getting annoyed with the aliasing anyway alright so now we can try this out however I think we should time warp to the point where the moon ah but we really can't uh, adjust precisely because we I don't think we can target the moon right now well, we'll we'll just do an off-plane transfer. I think we have enough delta v for that. I think we have enough delta v for an off-plane transfer, so we won't match inclinations initially. Uh, a little bit riskier, but we'll at least knock out the sounding rocket record contract. So if it doesn't work out, we'll we'll get the funds back anyway. All right, so uh, let us let's go with this. Oh, uh, by the way, I've upgraded to Realism Overhaul 8.1.1. So just as a little note on the upgrade status, uh, we have got the latest Realism Overhaul. And so that should mean some effects on some of the engines that did not have proper plume effects before, at least. And I think there are some other changes as well. Oh, I'm talking away and I'm late for turning. Oh, that's gotta be interesting. Trying to hit the moon without being able to create a maneuver node. I have not done that before. So we get these puff clouds is the problem. And, and uh, what I have to do is uh, click apply here, but that might cause a little bit of an issue while I'm in the middle of a launch. I have nev I've just never tried that before. Well, since we can't target anything, rendezvous is... there's no point. We don't need to worry about landing. Okay, we're coming up on first booster set. We're pretty steep. We're going up pretty steeply. Okay, I think we're good. Yep, alright. I think I'll keep it to 30 for now. Seems like a good idea. So there it is. I think the double booster stages have worked out quite well so far. Coming up the transfer to the moon is going to be tricky. I'm trying to think about how to do that. Possibly the best solution is simply to wait. We'll toss it uh, in the vicinity of the moon and eventually the moon will come around kind of thing. But I don't know if that's the cleverest way of doing it. Okay, booster's off. And away. Looks like time to apoapsis is going down so I won't uh, decrease my pitch. I will stage the fairing stone. Okay, that is the end of that stage. Stage. And ignite second stage. Oh yes, we needed uh, RCS to stabilize us here. Let's get that alright. Still a weak stage, but uh, we'll keep it pitched up like this. It's not as bad as before. The timing would have been if uh, we would want Cape Canaveral on this side, uh, facing this point here, I think. We're quite a bit off from that. Hmm. We're very definitely in the wrong place for this. And... One of our nodes is going to end up around here. Probably that's the node that we should burn out of. If we want any chance of hitting the moon. Okay, time to apoapsis. This is creeping down there, but we should be alright. Still a very wiggly gimbal. Alright. 
And RCS. Well, we are a mighty stage, but not that mighty. But I don't think I... I mean, we can go past Apolapsis, that's not an issue. I think that's fine. I think it's fine. It's not quite as fine as how much of the MMH N204 we're using. Oop. Nope, didn't do that very well at all. Okay. Alright, stop doing that. Let us... Right. Let's cut that out for now. Let's see. How do we get there? How do we get there? This is our orbit. Not ideal by any stretch of the imagination. Probably good I stopped it at least. So, just trying to sight it. So, around here somewhere, we should burn out, try to hit the moon. Still very high. At least we're in communication. And here we go. So we're probably not going to get any indication of an intercept because we haven't unlocked that yet. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to burn out this stage. And we'll time warp a bit and see if uh, at any point this thing actually hits the moon. <laughs> Again, not the best way of going about things, but could be worse. Uh, it's a plucky little solar probe. Hope it's not wasting too much on the RCS. Constantly firing that. Okay, we're really getting out there now, about 20 seconds left. Doesn't look like we've got it quite right for the moon. We're way past the moon now, and that's the end of that. Uh, well, maybe on that part. Tough to see that happening though. Alright. Well, heck. Here we are. We'll definitely break all the sounding rocket records now. So, uh, let's not pretend that RCS is gonna do anything. Fuel is reasonably balanced, and off it goes. Now, according to what Nathan Kell said, uh, we will lose communication at some point around 800,000 kilometers. Could have saved a little bit of fuel in order to maybe help a rendezvous out. Okay, we got that sounding rocket record. Hold on, let's see if there's a new one back at the Space Center. I guess I can't resist milking this after all. Well, I mean, if you get it done, you get it done, right? So, 73,000 kilometers or so. Yep, done. And, yep, let's go back and check. 113,000, you say? Thereabouts? Alright. Now, the tracking station says it is actually on an escape trajectory out of Kerbin. So, even though this shows an orbit, we might not actually have an orbit. That's a problem. I was sort of counting on being able to loop back and maybe hit the moon on another pass. That might not happen. Okay, well we fulfilled that one. I'm not gonna go back and check for another one. Let's see if this is on escape. Okay, so communication stretches to the moon and beyond. We've lost communication around... Oh, we're on escape. No, no, we're not. 
Oh, yes, we are. Uh, yep, we have escaped. Okay, so, uh, well, first probe on escape. Unfortunately, we can't communicate with it to get science and such. Hmm, just uh, another antenna would probably have allowed us to keep communication, right? Just a little bit more antenna power and we would have been able to do science out here. Very interesting. Anyway, uh, we got our, our funds from this. I'm satisfied. Let's go back to the VAB and see what else we can do. Actually, maybe tracking station? You know, 140,000 is not bad. Patch conics visible on map. Yeah, I think we can afford that now. I mean, I've, I've proven that I can't hit the moon without a little bit of help, so... Okay, alright. Um, yeah, so now that we have patch conics visible... Maybe we can... Let's do it again! Let's do it again. Yep, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, I time warped to daylight, but we might have to do some more time warping in order to get the right timing for transfer to the moon. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna try same rocket, different uh, different situation. Now we can target the moon, and given the relative inclination there, we are in completely the wrong timing. So let us time warp here, hoping that all our resources remain stable because of the tower and all. Okay, that's close enough. Here we go. SAS is on, throttle is up, rocket is fully fueled and loaded. It is in the dark. Um, nothing we can do about that. Let's go. So this time, to the moon. Okay, so far everything is nominal. No big surprises there since we just tried this one out. Still didn't fix the fairing thing yet. I have to say, I wouldn't describe control as great on this thing. There is the sense that if I deviate too much, it will cause problems, but there's no need to deviate because the thrust is adequate. Hmm, our inclination is, seems to be increasing. Uh, so... You know, that seems to make it worse. Gotta keep that relative inclination. Okay, come on, booster set. Keeping the relative inclination low. Been late on the booster separations this time. Okay, fairing set. I like this whole using the plume to show the rocket. In KSP, normally I have to use the Milky Way in, if I'm in the dark, but uh, the plume is a much better way to go. As a backdrop to show the shadow of the, the silhouette of the rocket. Okay, pre-activating RCS. And stage. And ignite. Okay, try and stabilize. Okay, well this plume can't do anything for us. Back to the Milky Way. Okay, so I know apoapsis is going up, so adjusting pitch. Okay, and RCS on, set, and ignite.
Alright, so which side are we? How far away are we from... Oh, we're not too far away from a possible transfer. Let's quickly say we burn out directly from here. We could finagle a transfer, but uh, we're in the middle of a burn now, so it's tough to convince the maneuver node system. There. It's pretty darn close. Okay, uh, why don't you get us to the maneuver node instead, then? Well, we've got definitely got that 5,000. We can adjust further on, but yeah, we're on track for the moon. We'll need to do some adjustment. Uh, I don't think the point two is the big deal, actually. That's the timing of it. Uh, we're trying to go direct when actually probably that's not the best way to go. It's possible that delaying it a little bit uh, this way or that, well, we're probably going to end up delaying it. But uh, it's possible further adjustments would lead to better results. But since we've got extra in this stage anyway, that's the problem I'm working on here. We need to boost out in some direction. Uh, one end is going to be higher than the other. We're not going to circularize or anything like that. So best to just head like this. So we'll end up uh, at the end of this stage having a higher orbit. Our apoapsis is high on this side. And there's that. Okay. So now, let me just uh, replot this. We're drifting a little bit, but that's all right. That's not too bad. We can do a mid-course adjustment as well, uh, 3,000 kilometers or so. Okay. So, off, uh, yeah, node RCS on, and we better start burning immediately. Oh, we lost communication. Well, okay. Well, that's that's not the worst thing that could possibly happen. All right. So uh, this plan is out, but we're in a safe orbit, and so we'll redo things once we go around and see what kind of connection we have. Now, I don't think a free return trajectory is necessary. Obviously, I think just sending it out into interplanetary space is fine. Uh, 558 kilometers on this one. But in 17 minutes, are we going to have communication? That's the question. Should do. There's a location right here. And we've got a satellite up there, Chandra 1. That may or may not help. Okay, well, this is about time. Alright, RCS is on, node, and burn. There's a teensy bit of chance we could get into orbit around the moon. Let's try for that. I think I am going to try for that. We've got the contract after all. Of course, with all the RCS I'm burning here, that's gonna cut into any sort of budget to get into orbit around the moon. The only number I know for getting into orbit around the moon assumes you're gonna end up in a tight orbit uh, for a potential landing, right? Uh, that's about 800 to 900 meters per second to get into that sort of orbit. But we don't need that kind of tight orbit. We just need any orbit around the moon. So I don't know exactly how much I need for that. Well, if I kill... well. Oh heck, it's just spinning if I get rid of RCS. That's no problem. Could have saved all that RCS. Got about 650 meters per second. Does this thing throttle? Well, it sounds like it, but let's see in actuality. No, it doesn't. It has the sound effect throttle, and probably the flame effect as well, but it doesn't really throttle. 
and I'm going to use RCS to adjust the rest. A little bit touchy, but okay. Three, 375, 375 kilometers away from the moon, lunar surface. The lunar surface, not the lunar. Okay, well here we go. We're on our way to the moon. No mid-course correction necessary, I don't think. Let's just head out there. There we go. Let's make sure our solar panels are... Well, I don't want to turn this, actually. How much electric charge do we have? Doesn't tell me how long until I run out. Should be alright. Okay, well we've got a nice little pass close to the moon and I think periapsis will still be out of line of sight. Probably will have to be a little bit past periapsis to actually make the burn while still having communication with Earth. That's not much. Wow, I didn't think it'd be just 192. Let, let me see. Uh, thought it'd be more than this. Oh yeah, well it gets a lot more once you try and get real close. All right, but let's let's make it loose. So yeah, it turns out we had more than enough. Didn't realize that. Is that a good texture for the moon? Let's get closer and find out. Seems brighter than I thought it would be. Don't you think? A lot brighter. Well, we're out of communication now, as expected. Okay, Earth rise, and we have communication. A little bit of a, a little bit of a delay, but that should not be an issue. Let's tell the craft to head towards node while activating RCS. Okay, I'm going to take Smart ASS off, put SAS on, on, right, and now burn. Could use the remote tech computer, but I'm still somewhat at odds with it. And this is not a burn that needs to be particularly precise, we're already in orbit. And let's get, well, that's fine. Over a period of under 12 hours. RCS off. Okay. And we've got a little bit of extra juice if we need it. But let's see our contract. Achieve orbit around the moon. Now let's transmit some science. So activate Geiger counter. Geiger counter, transmit that. Okay. And probe situation report. High over the moon. Okay. Wonder what low over the moon will be. But we've done that. We can't land on the moon. So we've done as much as we can here. Very good. Let's go back to the Space Center. So not only did we get a probe over to the moon, we got a probe in orbit around the moon, transmitted science. And so I think that's a pretty eventful episode. Uh, used the Chandra 2, which is just an upgrade of the previous probe that we had. Pretty lightweight. Uh, maybe we should aim for bigger and better things. Perhaps next time we should be prototyping our our crude capsule and such. I think uh, once you've put a probe in orbit around the moon, maybe that's a thing to do. Um, though we do still have other things to do with regard to the moon. Though perhaps that can wait after we start our manned space flight program. But are we ready for manned spaceflight? Well, we'll have to take a look at that. The early capsule will have a probe core as well, I think, just to make sure. I mean, we'll test it out like that. I think that'll be good. We haven't actually re-entered anything. Hold on a sec. We haven't actually tried to re-enter something, have we? We haven't tried to recover anything at all. <laughs> okay, so next episode, first thing, recovering stuff. 
then maybe we'll talk about manned spacecraft. All right. All right. So recovering stuff from space we haven't done yet. That'll be the priority for the next episode. Okay, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.